Christelle. to celebrate the feast of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Um, we have here present um, the brothers in the Garen house. Um, you probably can't see them, but uh, we're together here. Uh, and because we're one household, we're able to sort of celebrate together. But we wanted to share that with as many people as possible. So thank you if you've stayed on. Like, I know we're late in starting, it's not unusual in the missionaries of God's love. We, <laughs> we have ways of, of bending time in all sorts of fashion. Uh, but we, I trust you're still with us. And those who are with us, we do really thank you for having the patience for waiting. And, and as we enter into this Eucharist, we want to really um, celebrate and give thanks to the Lord for the great gift of our Blessed Virgin Mary, our Mother. Uh, and also turn to her and ask her help this time in uh, our journey, whatever we're in going through this stage, we want to sort of like invite her to be part of our journey and to lift us higher, as it were, through her intercession towards the Lord. So we're aware, of course, of our weakness and our sinfulness, and we ask uh, the Lord's mercy and forgiveness. You sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Our mighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Peace to 
seen inside it. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman adorned with the sun, standing on the moon and with the twelve stars on her head for a crown. She was pregnant and in labor crying aloud in the pangs of childbirth. Then a second sign appeared in the sky, a huge red dragon which had seven heads and ten horns and each of the seven heads crowned with a coronet. Its tail dragged a third of the stars from the sky and dropped them to the earth. And the dragon stopped in front of the woman as she was having the child, so that he could eat it as soon as it was born from its mother. The woman brought a male child into the world. The son, who was to rule all the nations, with an iron scepter, and the child was taken straight up to where God had made a place of safety. Sorry, was taken straight up to God and to his throne, while the woman escaped into the desert, where God had made a place of safety ready. Then I heard a voice shout from heaven, 
Victory and power and empire forever have been won by our God and all authority for his Christ. <coughs> this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The queen stands at your right hand arrayed in gold. The queen stands at your right hand arrayed in gold. The daughters of kings are among your loved ones. On your right stands the queen in gold of Ophir. Listen, O daughter, give ear to my words. Forget your own people and your father's house. The queen stands on your right hand, arrayed in gold. So will the king desire your beauty. He is your lord, pay homage to him. They are escorted amid gladness and joy. They pass within the palace of the king. The queen stands on your right hand, arrayed in gold. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Corinthians. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruit of all who have fallen asleep. Death came through men, and in the same way, resurrection of the dead has come through one man. Just as all men die in Adam, so all men will be brought to life in Christ. But all of them in their proper order. Christ as a first fruit, and then after the coming of Christ. Those who belong to him first, sorry, after that will come the end. When, he, when his hand over the kingdom to God the Father, having done always with serenity, authority, and power. For, for he must be king until he has put all his enemies under his feet, and the last of, of enemies to destroy is dead. For everything is to put under his feet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. She gave a loud cry and said, Of all women, you are the most blessed, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why should I be honoured with a visit from the mother of my Lord? For the moment your greeting reached my ears, 
the child in my womb leapt for joy. Yes, blessed is she who believed that the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit exalts in God my Saviour, because he has looked upon the lowly handmaid. Yes, from this day forward, all generations will call me blessed. For the Almighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name. And his mercy reaches from age to age for those who fear him. He has shown the power of his arm. He has routed the proud of heart. He has put down princes from their thrones and exalted the lowly. The hungry he has filled with good things. The rich sent empty away. He has come to the help of Israel, his servant, mindful of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, of his mercy to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then went back home. The Gospel of the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this beautiful feast. I ask you, Lord, to help us to appreciate uh, the wonderful way in which uh, you have graced us by this particular feast of Mary's Assumption. We thank you and praise your name. Amen. Well, I can smell the jonquils. Uh, these are the here at the altar, the beautiful flowers that the brothers have lovingly prepared to celebrate the Blessed Virgin Mary, a sign of uh, their love for her. I just hope they came from our garden and weren't snitched. But, uh, <laughs> but it's all out of love for uh, our mother who we celebrate this day. Yesterday, you remember, we celebrated Maximilian Kolbe, the great uh, Polish priest who was in Auschwitz prison camp during the Second World War and um, sacrificed himself for another man who was a married man when they wanted to sort of pe put people into the starvation bunker as a retaliation for someone who had escaped. And he sacrificed himself. He was a Pole, he was a priest, that was good enough for the commander. And so he ended up in the starvation bunker. I was taken by this because it, she had, he had such a love for the Blessed Virgin Mary uh, and he ended up dying on the Feast of the Assumption, or the, the eve of the feast, uh, on the 14th. While his body was wasting away through starvation, he spent his time encouraging the others who were also had been condemned to death as well. Uh, and then ultimately, he was killed by a, an injection of carbolic acid, the last one to die. And died with a great smile on his face. Because he knew that this was not the end. He knew that it was actually a new beginning. What strikes me most is his faith in eternity. As it does always when I ponder the saints, how they had such great faith that the suffering that we endure now is nothing compared to what is yet to come, what God has in store for those who, who love him. And so it's appropriate, of course, that that, that leads in, us into this beautiful feast of Mary being assumed into heaven. Because it's all about a faith in the resurrection of Christ that we too are, are destined, as Maximilian Colby was, to share in the resurrection of Christ 
uh, not only now but at the end of time when our bodies will be raised up uh, and into glory. And so Mary's um, share in the resurrection was um, quite profound. You know, because um, Christ is the first fruits, as it were, of uh, the resurrection that we're all meant to share in. Uh, that which will come on the sec in the second coming. Paul was speaking about that. He says, uh, he's the first fruits, and then after the second coming, those who belong to him will share in this resurrection. So Mary's assumption really is an anticipation of that. She's assumed in heaven already sharing in the fullness and the resurrection of Jesus. Of course, we've always, already been baptised into Christ. Uh, and, and so we've already been baptised into his death and resurrection. But what we celebrate today is that there's a greater future ahead of us, way beyond what this earth can provide. A future to be with God forever and, and to be raised up bodily as well at the end of time. Uh, when our souls will be, who have gone to God will be united again uh, with our bodies. So Mary then, being the perfect disciple, uh, you know, she went to the cross with great trust in God, standing there. And I'm sure, even though it's not in Scripture, that when Jesus rose from the dead, he didn't only go to Peter and the other apostles, James and others that are represented there in Scripture, but I would say he first went to his mother. Now, there's nothing in Scripture about that, but many saints down through the ages have reflected on this. So she began to share in the resurrection of Christ through an encounter with him, a personal encounter, which we too have experienced, a personal encounter with the risen Christ. But she experienced it differently because he was there uh, in the flesh before her. And I'm sure that was a wonderful meeting and a wonderful a moment for her uh, because she'd been through such sorrow and such distress and pain through watching him crucified. But life's like that, isn't it? It's about dying and rising. And she is the one who brings us into this experience of resurrection. You know, she then experienced, of course, the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Uh, and then, finally, whenever, we don't know where she was, it, it, it could have been in Ephesus, it could have been in Jerusalem, there's two places contending for where she was, when the Father assumed her into heaven, took her up, body and soul, into heaven uh, at the end of her earthly pilgrimage. That's like a sure sign for us, for all of us, that we are destined for heaven too. She is, as we're gone before us, as the, the first disciple, the most perfect disciple, the one who put her trust totally in God and gave herself completely over to the Lord up until you know, experiencing the, the cross of Jesus in a profound way. And then ultimately, when she finally came to the end of her, her life, that giving over all to God. That's what the assumption, uh, and then she was uh, taken up into God. So she's the sure sign for us that we too are destined for eternity. That's something that we tend to forget in this um, age. We, we're so focused upon the now and what we can experience now and uh, how am I living now and what I'm going to get now that we forget that our destiny is actually to be fulfilled beyond this earth. It's to be fulfilled in heaven with God forever. And so she has been assumed bodily into heaven, so that soul and body, she is glorified, beautiful, uh, wonderful. You know, uh, it's described there in, in the, the, the first uh, reading beautifully about how she's... Uh, uh, a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman adorned with the sun, standing on the moon, with twelve stars on her head for a crown. Like as a way of trying to express the inex inexpressible uh, that, uh, of Mary's glory uh, as she is 
uh, been humble disciple now taken into glory. And so she's just saying to us that we have a future ahead of us beyond this earth and that we need to have our heart and our minds set upon that, really. Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor heart of man conceived, Paul says. Uh, no, what for what God has in store for us uh, beyond the grave. So Mary, glorified in beauty, has gone before us. She's like, I like the image of the star of the sea. It's an ancient image. Where ancient mariners were, of course, like um, in rough weather and everything. They, they had to get their navigation right by looking at the stars. And so there's a particular star that would lead them home. And so she's like the star of the sea who leads us home through all the rough seas that we go through in life and all the turbulence that comes and everything like that. Do we know that we don't have a, an earthly, here on earth we don't have a lasting dwelling place, but we're intended for something much greater, really. And we're only just pilgrims here on earth, really. Uh, our heart needs to be then set upon our heavenly homeland. Even though we'll be very industrious about seeking to build a better world because we, out of love that God gives into our hearts, we're meant to sort of do all we can to, to support and, and care for our brothers and sisters here. But always within ourselves, as we go through the slush and the mud of life here, we'll have our eyes looking up at the stars, huh? looking up at the star, uh, the, the star of the sea, the Blessed Virgin Mary, who's gone before us in a wonderful sign beckoning us forward in our life. Huh? There's a beautiful text in 1 John 3, where it says, Think of the love that the Father has lavished on us by calling us God's children, because that is what we are. What we are to be in the future has not yet been revealed, but when it is, we'll see him as he really is. And everyone who entertains that hope uh, should really try to be pure in Christ. So that's the call in our lives. We're seeking the aid of the Blessed Virgin Mary to, so that we can actually grow, grow in holiness and, and have our eyes fixed on what is yet to come. Uh, the kingdom of God is upon us, yes, and lives within us, but there's a not yet happening. Uh, and we need to be really given over in a new way to the Lord and ask her to help us uh, so that we can actually become pure in Christ. See, she reminds us of our, of our destiny, that we're, we're called to greatness. And her greatness, of course, is not the greatness of this world, it's a, the greatness of humility, a life of service. She's about the handmaid of the Lord. Huh? Let it be done to me according to your will. And so that's the way... She'll teach us too to live as we're looking forward to our ultimate homeland, which is in heaven. Huh? Like Paul says, he says, I forget the past and I strain ahead for what is yet to come, for the prize which God calls us upward in Christ Jesus. That's how we're meant to be, straining ahead for what is yet to come, for the prize. But God calls us to upward, you know, upwards in Christ. You know, we're going up. <laughs> Mary has had a major going up in her, her assumption. Now, I don't expect anyone here is going to be assumed into heaven. But, we <laughs> but when we die, we will trust, we trust that our death will be such that it will be like her, surrendered to the Lord and then taken into the Lord's heart uh, as he really desires. But she's not only a sign beckoning us that direction, she's like a helper to get us there. She's the mother of all disciples, so she intercedes for, for us. Just like in Cana of Galilee, remember when she was walking this earth with Jesus, uh, and there's a problem, a big problem, you know, an embarrassing problem. And she just simply says, they have no wine. As if Jesus didn't know. They have no wine. And that's what she's like too. For those of us who open our hearts to, to her and her presence with us, she'll go to the Lord and say, there's something missing. He needs something. She needs something. There isn't, may not be wine. 
<laughs> but whatever it is that that we most need. The wine, of course, can represent the new wine of the spirit, huh? The new wine that we most need in our lives. Because she is spouse of the Holy Spirit, huh? And so we can ask her to... Uh, uh, they have no wine. And then, then, and even if we don't ask her for things, she's attentive, as she was there to those people at that wedding feast, huh? And then she just simply says, even though he's hesitant and reluctant, do whatever he tells you. She knew that that was his purpose, that he had a saving purpose. And, and he still has, of course, a, and always will have a saving purpose for each one of us, no matter what our situation is, and especially when our situation is problematic. As for most of us at these times, uh, she's there uh, wanting to um, help in that moment. So that helping of, of Blessed Virgin Mary wasn't just when she walked uh, the earth with the disciples, but it's especially now in heaven that's become a universal helping, a very special and extraordinary way of interceding for uh, all uh, men and women who really will turn to the Lord, turn to her. So praying for uh, our salvation, she's there. Praying for our sanctification especially. Because Mary is always in Christ now. You know, she's totally in, in Christ in heaven, in the Trinity. You know, she's taken up into the mystery of God. And so her, her request uh, of, of the Lord is always going to be answered, really. Because that Jesus promised that, you know, if you live in me and my words remain in you, you can ask what you like and you will get it. You know, if, if we're all, Mary always prays in the will of God. She's living in the Lord totally now. And so whatever she asks, you know, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get. So really it's good to turn, to fly to her. And it's always been the case down through the ages that uh, men and women who really love the Lord uh, will go to his mother uh, at times, especially in times of peril, in times of, of needing tr some help in, in difficulties. She's a loving mother. You know, the star of the sea who beckons us across the storms of the sea and, and gives us the grace too to be able to not be thrown overboard in the midst of all of that struggle and pain and difficulty and the storms of life. Huh? So when we fail, she's there to help pick us up. When we're discouraged, you know, she's there to give us hope. When we lose our way, she's there as the light for our path. When we're hurting due to sin, she's the mother of mercy and, 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 and can minister to us the mercy of the Lord. And when we're feeling we can't go on, she's there uh, giving strength and new confidence. So it's beautiful that this day we celebrate the wonderful mother that we have, our Heavenly Mother, we celebrate she who God the Father raised, uh, assumed into heaven, body and soul. So she's the sign of what we're meant to be, how we're meant to go, what our destiny is. And she's also the helper on that way of pilgrim journey that we're still on, that we'll be able to keep our eyes fixed upon our ultimate goal, which is heaven itself. A and she'll be there to help us to grow more deeply in a life of holiness, a purity of heart that we need. Because the pure of heart will see God. You know, it's a single-mindedness of purpose that we'll attain through the Blessed Virgin Mary's intercession. We find ourselves always looking upward to the prize for which Christ Jesus has won us, for us and for which he calls us to evermore. Not to be tied down and bound too much to earthly cares and earthly worries and earthly concerns. It's only a very short time before God is going to call each one of us to himself. Uh, and the Blessed Virgin Mary is the one who will be there for us at that, that hour of our death as well, with Joseph as well. And we ask her to care for us and to nurture us and, and encourage us and strengthen us through her prayers so that the journey that we take be one that um, truly is to the glory of God because all she is about is simply doing God's will and living for his glory. 
전도하시네. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. So confident in the love the Lord has for us, we um, bring before him uh, the petitions that have been prepared, and we ask uh, his mercy upon us in these days. That the upcoming plenary council be anointed by the Holy Spirit as we discern the way ahead for the church in Australia. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That governments and health advisors have wisdom in taking measures to protect the vulnerable in this time of the pandemic. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That Catholic charismatic renew renewal in Australia will fulfill its purpose of bringing the baptism of the Spirit into the whole life of the Church. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are suffering physically or mentally due to the pandemic may know healing and consolation and the support of others. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That the people of India who celebrate their Independence Day may be protected from COVID and be able to find the social and medical solutions to overcome the scourge of this pandemic. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may be brought into the fullness of eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That many men and women may respond wholeheartedly to the vocation to religious life and priesthood. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. I'd like to say a prayer too for um Praise the soul of John Ryan, uh, Chris Ryan's father, who died uh, last night. So we bring all these uh, prayers to you, Lord, confident in your mercy and your love, that you always look upon us with kindness. We ask them in and through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, that uh, we may be truly uh, uh, faithful to you, Lord, uh, and, and to the end that we may uh, really grow in personal holiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Of his great love, he 
gave his only son everything was done so you would come nothing you can do could make him love you more and nothing that you've done could make him close the door because of his great love he gave his only son Everything was done so you would come. Come to the Father, though you give His more. Open hearts, broken lives, He will take them all. The power of the world, the power of His love. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and the glory of His name, for our good and the good of all the Holy Church. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the Most Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts uh, aflame with the fire of love constantly long for you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven at the, beginning an Im at the beginning an image of your church's coming to perfection and a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Grant that you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her own body she marvellously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so in company with the Church of Angels, uh, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. So from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, 
that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The history of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognise the sacrificial victim by his death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. With your blessed apostles, your glorious martyrs, and Joseph, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, our Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Christopher our Bishop, the order of bishops and all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servants, John, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of your own glorious body, to our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, whom you bestow on the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever.
is command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of power and the glory of your now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Holy Spirit. Shall we each other the sign of peace? Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
just a simple sense of the Holy Spirit uh, descending upon each one of us, uh, whether you're at home or you're here, and to open your hearts, open yourselves to the Holy Spirit, uh, just as uh, Mary opened herself fully to the Holy Spirit 
um, just about wherever you are, um, that you would open your heart and just the Lord would be inviting us to open our hearts to the Holy Spirit who descends upon us. I just had a sense of the, it was drawn to the Holy Family fleeing to Egypt. And uh, the sense was that in those times of affliction for Mary and Joseph, the only consolation they had was that God was with them. And just a real reminder that the deepest consolation we can experience in this life is knowing that God is with us. I had an image of this dark night where it's so dark with a lot of traps, which is like uncertainty. But then darkest night, there's a light shining in the sky. That light is our hope. That light is Mother Mary, that light is Jesus, that's the Holy Family shining that light on this dark path. We have to touch in that light, that, that's what light, that light will guide us. Uh, there's a word that's come in over the chat from um, Tim Kirk that he's seen the image of um, the ploughing of a field that, that God is sowing a seed in the field and, and disturbing the soil. And it's, um, it was the real sense that in this time of isolation and struggle, um, God's disturbing the soil so that he can plant that seed and, and reap a, a beautiful harvest out of that. So just to allow our inner lives to um, be disturbed and, and brought up in that way so that God can reap reap the harvest from that. So the sense too that um, as we were worshipping the Lord that we were being joined with all the angels and saints and the Blessed Virgin Mary who are constantly worshipping at the throne of God and that that worship in heaven is united with our worship and we give him the glory in that way. So I think it's very pleasing to the heart of God, and in so much so that I think we should do a little bit more of that last song, uh, just to sort of continue to worship. Right? Thank you. Uh, and <laughs> just a little bit more, um, to just thank the Lord and worship him, in union for all the, and be in mindful that we're, when we're worshipping here like this in the Eucharist, we're worshipping with in a very real way, all the angels and saints in heaven, and, and um, uh, with the Blessed Virgin Mary right at their, their centre, they're all adoring and worshipping at the throne of God, uh, and uh, giving glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So it's um, just a little bit more of that would be good for us, our souls, I think. <laughs> Thanks.
beginning and the end. The God of three in one. Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great! yet to come uh, and to be excited about that and know that this time on earth is so short in comparison to eternity and we are destined for eternity we have to live forever with God out of all the angels and saints down through the ages what a wonderful future we have with God thank you and praise you Lord Let us pray. <coughs> Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord.
So the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with every blessing. Amen. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. Amen. May you who have devoutly gathered on this day carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Spirit come down upon you and be with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. As I kneel before you, as I bow my head in prayer, take this day, make it yours, and fill me with your love.